part one of baking lighting with mental ray in Maya for your unity environments. So in this first part, we're actually going to be creating the environment uh, within unity. And if you already have an environment created, you could skip to part two, but I'm going to be having a lot of tips on um, how to, how to put your scene together so that when you bake the lighting in, in uh, Maya, it actually works well. So you probably want to check this video out either way. Um, but what we're going to be doing right now in this video is creating a small interior environment. And what we're going to be using to do that is Pro Builder. Um, I think Pro Builder is the best uh, 3D modeling tool for use with inside of Unity itself. So I'm going to be using Pro Builder, Advanced, and Pro Grids to create my environment. Now, both of those assets are available in the Pro Core bundle. I already have that imported into my project. So I'm ready to get started. And uh, I'm just going to create a new shape. I'm going to make it a plane. I want the width and the height to be three. And then I'm going to put width segments to zero and length to zero and build that plane. So that's going to give me a quad, two triangles. And uh, it's going to be a size of three by three. I'm going to go ahead and move it to zero, zero, zero. And I'm going to be moving pretty quickly with Pro Builder today. So if uh, you have a lot of questions about the stuff that I'm doing in Pro Builder, um, and you're new to it, feel free to come to this video right here. It's called Tutorial Level Design with Pro Core. And in this video, um, it goes into a lot more depth about how to use Pro Builder for level design. So all the stuff that I'm using is covered in depth in that video. Feel free to check that out if I'm moving too fast. I've created a three by three floor unit and I have a texture selected and that is the, uh, I just have a floor, floor texture here that's wood. Now it's tiling and I just want to, I want this texture, it's a 1024 by 1024 texture, I want that to fit into this quad. So I'm going to go ahead and select in the face mode, select this face and go to the UV editor and the easiest way to get the UV just to fit uh, right to your texture is to convert to manual, click fit UVs, and then convert back to auto. So now I have a uh, face with the texture correctly applied. And what this means is that uh, three by three in this world is gonna equal 1024 by 1024 image map. So all units in the world, three by three uh, unity units is equal to a 1024 by 1024 image map pixels. So if we maintain this uh, scale throughout the entire environment, the textile density will be correct and all the pixels throughout the entire game will all be the same exact size. So as I create my environment, I'm gonna make sure that all the geometry I create is uh, a unit of three is equal to 1024 pixels. Now, uh, I've already created a floor unit. I'm gonna go ahead and name this floor. And from here, um, I wanna make sure I'm back into object mode and I'm gonna duplicate the floor unit. And I, you can see it's just sliding everywhere. I'm gonna undo that. Turn on the pro grids grid and it's on uh, zero to five, that's fine. Now the floor is going to snap right into place. I'm going to duplicate it again. And uh, we should have, I'll do four floor units. And then I'm going to duplicate it, all four of them this way. And we'll just go uh, four by four. All right, so I should have four by four on the floor units now. And uh, I can go ahead and I'm just gonna combine these into a, a single object and call this floor. Now we have duplicate vertices at all of these points now. So I'm gonna go ahead into vertice mode, select all the verts and do a weld vertices. That's gonna weld 39 vertices together. And now we have a proper uh, 3D model on the floor. I'm going to go ahead and do the same process for the walls. Uh, create a new plane. It's going to be three by three and the direction I'm just going to say right. 
and build the plane and that's three three and zero zero on the width and the length that way because um, I don't want to subdivide the object at all I just want it to be a quad so this is a wall unit I have a wall texture selected and of course I have the same problem I'm gonna have to go to the UV editor convert to manual fit to UV and back to manual now we have a, a proper wall and I'm gonna select the object mode and we'll just call this wall and start duplicating down the way <clears throat> now again one easy mistake to make is to be in the face mode when you start duplicating and if I do that and now I put this object into position and now I go back to object mode and you're gonna select it you'll notice that this wall has the uh, pivot point right here as it should and this wall now shares the same exact pivot point so now when I move this wall its its pivot point is wrong now we could fix the pivot but it's easier to just make sure when you duplicate you stay into object mode that way as you duplicate you're not duplicating the face uh, you're duplicating the entire model and the pivot point stays right where it should be and now that I have half of the walls done I'm just gonna go ahead and select those duplicate them bring them over here and as I rotate I'm holding control and that's not what I wanted so I'm gonna do a control Z and I'm gonna press the Z button so that it's on my keyboard so that it centers that pivot and there we go we've rotated that and move it back right into position okay so the wall units are done and I'm going to select all of the walls, merge together, weld the vertices, and rename this to the walls. All right, now I just need to create the ceiling, which is going to be pretty easy. We'll just duplicate the floor for that one and uh, rotate it. hundred and eighty degrees on the x-axis and I have a ceiling texture I'll put that up on the ceiling and this uh, scene is gonna be completely combined down into one um, drop also one 3d model so I'm gonna select the floor the walls and the ceiling and merge those not subdivide I'm gonna merge those into a new object and then uh, get the vertices welded down and now we have a single mesh uh, for the room and that's pretty well optimized as far as geometry goes in this room and we all know we got 1024 for three by three world units so now that the uh, the room is created, I'm ready to put some props in. So what I'm going to do is just grab some props from the asset store. And uh, what you're looking for is something that has basically just a diffuse map on it. So let me explain why real quick. I'm going to bring in uh, two, different, two different tables here. Or I'll bring in a table and a chair and let's look at these two objects real quick this one uh, we're gonna notice that it has this glass it has uh, some metal and some wood and if we look at the glass and metal we're gonna notice that the glass um, doesn't even have a texture it's just a color with with the transparency so if we want uh, so that doesn't work real great um, it's it ends up being more work with shaders and Maya and the materials the materials in unity and everything so it's easiest and the same thing with the metal you're gonna see the metal no texture just the color now that'll work um, this you know this little piece but it's it's best if we have an object like this chair and we're gonna notice that see here the chair just uses a single diffuse map on it so um, whatever you know it was probably by default come with the standard shader and basically on 3d models that you're using for example from the asset store if you 
you essentially want to be able to apply the mobile diffuse uh, shader to it and it still looks correct so you can see that um, with the mobile diffuse it just goes down to a single diffuse and the object still looks correct so if you can apply a mobile diffuse to your object and it still looks good then it's a good candidate that'll easily work um, otherwise you might have to do some more a uh, little bit extra work to get this glass for example in the transparency working correctly uh, in your bake so for you can see here if I switch this to mobile diffuse it's going to just go um, to a flat color and the objects that are good candidates essentially you would be able to switch them to a, to a simple diffuse map and it would still render correctly so that's the type of models that I'm going to be using as I select them I'm going to drop a few models into the scene Okay, so I'm done uh, putting some props in, and uh, the rest of the room I just leave empty for now because uh, it's a tutorial and I want to go quick, so this is going to be the whole room for now. And I put four lights um, into the roof, into the ceiling, so uh, we can see if I press play right now, we got 38 batches, 36 set pass calls, 7.6 tries. I'm going to... Uh, I want to combine everything into a single mesh. So I'm going to select all the props here and the point lights even have uh, little meshes on the ceiling. So um, I selected all the props I put in and I'm going to go to Tools, Pro Builder and Object Pro Builderize. And Pro Builderize the children, yes. Uh, because some of these objects have children as uh, extra meshes that are children. So now all the props are Pearl Builder objects. So that's going to let me select the room as well. So now I have all the geometry selected. And I'm going to be able to combine that all into a single mesh. Now I have one mesh here. And it has all of the geometry on it. So that means that it's using 25 materials. So I know I'm going to have 25 draw calls plus probably one for the sky. So there we are, 26 set pass calls. Um, but it's a single mesh. And what's happened now is these point lights all had... A, um, actual light as a child so I'm gonna select the four lights and bring those out because I don't want to delete those but everything else all of the game objects that I had in here for props um, there they could be deleted because they just were holding meshes and now the mesh are all combined into this so I'm gonna delete all of those game objects that just were essentially transforms left over so now we just have the camera, the uh, directional light, and I'm going to delete the directional light. We don't need that anymore. And then we have the room, and we've got four lights. So if I bring, I need to bring the camera into the room. And we should be able to see what it looks like. The lighting looks a little, um, a little weak but that's okay because we're gonna perfect the lighting in Maya so now what we have is the main camera the room which is one mesh with 25 materials and we have four point lights so this is gonna be um, a, the best setup for baking the light and the lighting in Maya all right so now that our environments done we're ready to export this over to Maya we're going to do that in part two of the tutorial, so I'll see you guys in that video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next part.